This is event number nine and we've come to England's Gulf Coast. This week we're at Formby Hall and with only a handful of events left in the season, we're entering a crucial stage of the PGA Euro Pro Tour. Hello and welcome to Formby Hall on England's famous Gulf Coast, home to 18 of the most naturally challenging and beautiful courses anywhere in Britain and widely regarded as the finest stretch of championship golf anywhere in the world. The tour returns to this stunning venue for the third time and a week of thrilling golf is guaranteed as the Euro Pro Tour players try and finish in the top five of the order of merit and guarantee themselves a card on next year's Challenge Tour. It's been a great campaign so far with seven different winners from the eight tournaments as the tour has gone around England, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Suffolk's Jamie Lee Abbott won the first event at Wenson Valley in Norfolk back in May, but Huddersfield's Chris Hansen leads the Order of Merit after wins at Bovey and Galgorn Castle. Graham Clark has enjoyed the fine return to form with victory at Longhurst Hall and two second place finishes. So this is how the Order of Merit is shaping up going into this week's event. Chris Hansen and Graham Clark are the only players guaranteed a top five finish, but they will still be among entrants aiming to win another £10,000. Three out of the four other event winners in 2011, Jamie Lee Abbott, Paul Reid and Duncan Stewart will also be in the field, while James Busby continues his record of playing in every tournament this year. We're currently top of the order of merit, um, some really good results this year and, and worked hard for those results and um, it's nice to start to see things pay off. So you've guaranteed yourself in the top five finish, are you now gunning for the first place? Uh, yeah, we're going to go out there and give it a go today, see what we can do. It's um, four back so we'll need a low one but there's some guys out there who've uh, really experienced this week, so like Phil Archer who's been on the European tour, so I think we'll need to go really low to if we're going to try and win. Formby Hall won't be an easy ride however. This is the third consecutive year the tour has been played here and the past 72, 7,081 yard course always provides a strong test of golf. Previous winners include the 2009 champion, Tom Haylock. Haylock went on to secure a place on the Challenge Tour on the back of his two Euro Pro Tour wins and 2010 champion, Nick McCarthy, who returns this week. After a disappointing season so far, he'll be hoping to repeat his win and help his campaign on the order of merit. It's a difficult prospect, and this week promises to be one of the toughest competitions of the campaign so far. The 18-hole layout features a series of testing holes, protected by water and well-placed bunkers. The course is set amongst 200 acres of picturesque parkland and is an established venue on the European Challenge Tour. The venue also offers a nine-hole par three course, which is said to be one of the best in the country. We caught up with director of golf, Mark Williams, to tell us more about this golf resort. Formby Hall is in the middle of England's Gulf Coast, uh, which includes golf courses like Royal Birkdale, Hillside, Southport and Ainsdale, uh, next year's Open Championship venue, Royal Lytham, uh, and obviously Royal Liverpool as well. And you know those golf courses have a strong heritage with hosting top uh, professional and amateur events, including the, the British Open, uh, the Ladies Open, and also the Amateur Championship. The golf course, once again, is in amazing condition. I, I think each year it just gets better and better. Uh, the ground staff work immensely hard. And the, the golf course is uh, it's, it's a nice unique blend between links and parkland. Uh, for that reason, it means it drains quite well in the wintertime, but also stays quite rel in a relatively true turf in, in the summertime, so it doesn't get too, too dried. The golf course features link style you know, hazards such as pot bunkers. There's quite a bit of water on the course. Uh, and there's also on the back nine some, you know, some tree-lined holes, which gets the wind swirling around and you know, always asking a question of golfers out there. Formby Hall are immensely proud to host the Euro Pro Tour here and I can uh, you know, really hope that relationship continues for many years to come. You know, we're also keen to be associated with, with amateur governing bodies. You, we're talking to the uh, Lancashire Golf Union about holding some county games here as well. So you know, we're keen to maintain and, and, and develop that relationship with, uh, with top flight golf. Uh, the, the golf course is designed for that. Uh, the members are very proud to see you know, top golfers from around the region and the, and the country playing on our golf course. Formby Hall's going from strength to strength. We're really keen to develop our reputation and again maintain a strong brand within the golfing industry. I'll catch up with Mark a little later in the show when we'll head out onto the course to have a look at the par 4 17th and the par 5 18th. 
Time now to get up to speed with day one and two of the Formby Hall Classic. James Busby, who's been runner-up three times this season, had a disappointing two rounds with one over and missed the cut this week. Last year's winner, Nick McCarthy, failed to repeat his winning performance and he also missed the cut. And the man vying for top spot on the order of merit this week, Graham Clark, goes into round three at five under. Former Walker Cup player Luke Goddard continues his good run. He's on seven under going into that final round. And order of merit leader Chris Hansen goes into day three at eight under par. And at nine under, it's former Walker Cup player and challenge tour member Tommy Fleetwood, who returns to his local club this week. Well, confirmation then of the leaderboard, and there really is some quality out there. Tommy Fleetwood and uh, Phil Archer just leading that field by a single shot ahead of uh, Warren Bennett, former Dutch Open winner, who leads a group of very talented Euro Pro Tour players. It's going to be a cracking final round. Well, Graham Clark on the second at five under. Got a really good chance of getting to the top of the order of merit this week if he turns in yet another consistent performance. And Ross McFarlane, former winner on the European Tour alongside me, it's consistency, the name of the game for Graham Clark. Definitely, and one or two other players at the top, but particularly Graham, whose game seems to be going from strength to strength each week on all the different sort of courses. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this fella. Immediately moving himself to six under. And uh, Graham Clark in good shape and Sean Whiffin who has been uh, around on the European Tour for a while now very well known to us and a quality player with an eagle opportunity on the third didn't quite take it but uh, the birdie taking him to seven under a bit of frustration for Sean early doors now Luke Goddard this man surely due a win definitely good golf swing very experienced young player had the opportunity to play golf with him and enjoyed watching him play and he hits quality shots like that all the time that's his second shot at the third fourth par four Graham Clark already picking up a shot and uh, we'll probably see him pull a few more of those out of the bag putting a great strength for Clark and his approach play as well looking in very good nick today <laughs> Good camaraderie down on the fairway between the boys. Second hole, 185-yard par three. There is water just short and left. Doesn't really come into play, especially for the likes of these players. And Grinnell there. Well, that would have looked very good from where he was on the tee. Not a bad shot. Just a bit on the green for Goddard to cope with here. A few undulations on the putting surfaces at Formby Hall. Struck it well. Oh, he struck it very well. What a start for Luke Goddard. An eagle in the bag. And uh, the boy is flying. That's the 25th eagle this week on that hole. Clark with his birdie attempt. Just a touch of left to right at the end. Oh, and he's got it. Beautiful putting stroke, very aggressive through the ball. Great start. Yeah, I think we all knew it was going to be a high-powered start to this final round. The uh, players have been playing very well indeed at Formby Hall this week. Grinnell then, with his chance for birdie. This will take him to nine under. Oh, shaves the hole. Just shows you the confidence, though, the players have got in the greens here at Formby. Really went after that one. Now, here's a familiar face. Phil Archer, former European Tour regular. You know, trying to fight his way back. Loves to play in the Euro Pro Tour. And showing his quality there at the first. Second shot in good shape. Setting up a birdie. And playing alongside Tommy Fleetwood, who knows this course proverbially like the back of his hand. Played here since he was a young boy. And that will certainly help him a bit in this final round Ross you can't get away from that fact well definitely a little bit of nerves probably on the first hole good tee shot very aggressive second going for the flags I expect to see lots of that today I'll tell you Paul Grinnell made his part 
at uh, two. Luke Goddard then with his approach at the fourth. Already moved himself to eight under with that terrific eagle, and that is just sublime. He's got the ball on the string at the moment, Luke Goddard. Getting the distance right, so key. George Cowan, eight under on this second. Second hole been playing, well, probably the tenth hardest all week. It's actually stroke 16 for the members, this. Members find a little bit of difficulty with the deep bunkers and the water on the short left. Fleetwood with a bit of, uh, bit of work to do here at the first. It's a lovely chipping action. Kept his wrists very firm, just rotated his body, allowed the loft of the club to do the job. I think he settled those nerves. Yeah, here's our order of merit leader, Chris Hansen, who once again has played very, very well this season. That little break that he took ahead of the year, I think, has helped him tremendously. Practiced hard, got his head right back where he wants it to be, and that isn't good. I've just talked him up, and he's stuck it in the drink. Phil Archer, uphill putt, first green. Just took a little hop on the strike, on the impact, seemed to just pull it fractionally left. Cowan for birdie at the second. A self-effacing golfer, George Cowan, when you talk to him, he's just, a, just another day at the office. Oh, he fancied that one. Stayed down and watched it all the way. Just shaved the right edge. Hanson after going in the water. You've been impressed by this young man this year? This year he's, he's really stepped up a level and looks like he's probably going to have his challenge tour card, which will be a good progression for him. He's got a chance of making his part. It's time, isn't it, for Chris Hansen, I think it's fair to say. Well, it took his, he took his time to win on the Euro Pro Tour, but when he won, took himself to the next level. Fleetwood for a, a tidy par. And, ooh, well, wiped its feet, but in it goes, and that will have settled things down for him, I'm sure. Plenty of local support for Fleetwood today. So many good golfers on and around that sort of eight, nine, seven under par area. And uh, that's not like Chris Hansen. That was a very tentative stroke. We've seen him go past the hole with his putting on many occasions this year. He really has been aggressive. So Arja to tidy up. Got one of these putters with a shaft which comes into the back of the head. Keeps the hands ahead, and he's positively stroked that in. A nice, simple, straightforward par for Phil. Oh, wonderful stuff out on the course at the moment. We thought it was going to be a good final round, and my goodness, it's turning into that. Graham Clark eagling the fifth, birdieing the sixth to take him to ten under. He's the man that leads by one, but this is still wide open. More great golf to come from the Formby Hall Classic after the break. Before we get back to the action, we caught up with Tommy Fleetwood, challenge tour member who this week returns to his home club to try and win a Euro Pro Tour event. If you're a golfer and you're born here, it's just the, the luckiest thing you can possibly get. The courses that are around here, they're so tough, so if you're an amateur and you're playing in events around the country and you're a member of one of these golf courses, you're going to do pretty well, I'd say, because they're so tough to get your handicap down on. You know, you have Royal Birkdale, Hillside, Southport and Ainsdale, all these links courses, and then but you can have Formby Hall in the middle of it all, and that's a Parkland, so it's just an amazing place to play golf, amazing place to grow up and just improve your game. My dad always put me in events that I was very young to play in, really, so every sort of level I was starting from scratch and I was very young, always nervous, and kind of made me tougher. So basically the biggest moment in my career was coming, getting to the final of the British Amateur when I was 17. Um, that was a massive step for me. It gave me so much confidence, and um, from there on I just tried to push on and um, get into certain teams like the European Team Championships for England and then the Walker Cup later on in life and, and all of those are just massive steps that you take in amateur golf. 
I was literally playing the golf of my life when I turned pro. It started off really well. I mean, I played a couple of events on the European tour, made the cuts and made some money, got my first paychecks, which was amazing. And then um, got a few invites on the Challenge Tour and I managed to get a Challenge Tour card out of my first two events. So it does take some getting used to, but obviously it's, it's a very long career golf. So you, I'm just on my learning curve at the moment. I'm very grateful for the Euro Pro Tour for giving me the invite to play and um, giving me the opportunity to play in front of obviously my members that will be happy to watch and you know it's a, it's a very tough tour it's great to play on my home golf course on TV trying to play for some money and it, it's superb preparation for anything that I'm going to be doing later on in the years well Ross McFarlane what a, what a good lad it just makes you want, uh, want to support him today isn't it definitely he seems you know he's got everything screwed on there he knows what he needs to do this is Tim Dykes, tied second last week at the Players Club, the World Snooker Association Championship. When he played shots like that, it's his second shot into four. Well, they're peppering the flags at the moment here at Formby Hall. Luke Goddard, the Hendon man, has been doing that as well. Playing 24th on the order of merit, so a win or a decent finish here this week is really what he's after set up the push for the rest of the season well, I could see what he was trying to do there yes came up a little short greens in excellent condition very receptive to short shots James Moore nine under par a little further down he's on the 13th hole one of the toughest holes on the golf course a long par three That's OK. Should be straightforward. Chip and run, maybe even a chip in. Yeah, that's what he'll be hoping for. Dykes uh, taking his time to line up this birdie opportunity. I think all the players know you can't miss anything today. If you miss anything like that, you shouldn't be a professional golfer, let's be honest. <laughs> that's fair enough, Ross. <laughs> Mind you, we have seen a few this year. Now, Luke Goddard, oh dear, for bogey. Is playing the hardest hole all week. There's been a host of bogeys and doubles, and that's a terrific bogey if you can have a terrific bogey. His first bit of trouble on this final round. He's come out of it relatively unscathed. So it's a good opportunity for James Moore to set a target, having just birdied the 12th. This is second shot on 13, the par three. Short backswing, got that a little thin, I think. Talking of a target, Ross, got to be double figures under the card, really. Yeah, 11 or 12 under minimum, I would say, on such beautiful conditions as this. George Cowan played some tidy golf so far in this final round, but just a couple of chances gone begging on the greens, and be annoyed with himself for that one just let it go a touch right uh, Warren Bennett another familiar face yeah I've played quite a lot with Warren over the years had some terrible problems with the injury specifically to his neck has even done some caddying on the ladies tour for a little while used to teach one or two of the ladies very good player nice action Plenty of good players to watch in action over these final 18. And more just trying to tidy things up here. Oh dear, well, he thought it was coming back. Another one of those trying the various different grips. Almost holding it with his right hand like a pen. Yeah, talking of putting grips, Ross, how many have you been through over the years? <laughs> Starts with a seven, I would have said. <laughs> seven or eight. But what you want is a touch like that around the greens. We played George Cowan. That'll do nicely. Now back to the silky smooth skills of Warren Bennett. Eagle opportunity here. This will take him to ten under, so that'll be the first man to join Graham Clark. Double figures under the card. Again, 
A little tentative, a little bit of a prod. Never got that one rolling. But like most players, he'll take a birdie at this stage. Very tall man, Warren Bennett. Sean Whiffin, he's also due a, a good result. Been a great supporter of the Euro Pro Tour over the years. Very important in these par fives to take full opportunity. Most of them reachable. And if you can slot those sort of putts in from 10, 12 feet, you've got a good chance. Nine under now for Sean. What always makes me laugh about Sean is he celebrates just like that and he looks just, ups just as upset when he misses him as well. Now Archer with a bit of trouble here. Got to move this ball and he's got it up very quickly. But that was about as good as he could get from there, I'm afraid. Not a great layup either. It, it, it looks like he was a little greedy. He needed to find the fairway for his third shot in that par five. Tim Dyke's obviously suffering with a little bit of elbow trouble. Golfer's elbow. I usually wear one of those little straps around the arm just to take a little bit of the resonance of the ball being hit when it comes up the arm. Yes, any of you that have suffered with it will know it is painful. Now Fleetwood, how's that for a gallery to follow you? I think that'll uh, give him some confidence, though. A few familiar faces around him in this last round. A lot of pressure, though, Simon, playing at your home club, but he seems to take pressure very well. Also playing with Phil Archer, you know, a long-time European Tour player. It'd be a good day for him. Another great learning day. Dykes is uh, just making a bit of a ricket, so this one at five. Not the first person either. This hole really causing some trouble. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Some of the members will be watching on thinking, but hang on, we play that one OK. <laughs> yeah, it's easy, this hole. <laughs> I made a birdie three weeks ago on there. Now, Archer, you don't get much more compact and tidy swings than that, and he's incredibly powerful. But he's been a bit too powerful there. Well, it gets a round of applause from the gallery. It's just held. Doesn't look happy, Phil, on this final round. It's been a, a sort of a shaky second and third hole for him. But James Moore coming off that drop shot, made a par on 14. His approach into 15. See more water. 16 holes with water involved. You need to be on your game round here. It is a beautiful course. One of those courses as well. You can't believe that it isn't older than it is. You know, Hansen, I can assure you, is the man tucked behind the tree. Seven under, so he's not really kicking on at the moment. And uh, just coming up short there. Now down as a birdie putt for Archer from uh, off of the dance floor, but outside chance. Never easy to judge the difference in the speeds of the two parts of the grass that you're putting over, particularly coming through the fringe grass. Sometimes you see a lot of players using a little utility wood or whatever from just off the edge of the green. You can see here, James Moore using a lot of loft just at the side of the green. You need a good, positive strike. Short backswing, punch it through. That's exactly what he's done. Some speed in those greens, though. Drying out as the sunshine and the wind bake them. Back to Fleetwood. Eagle opportunity. I think we might hear something from the gallery if this drops. I'm surprised. It, that's that's a similar read to the ones we've seen from other players on the same green. Yeah, they're all seeing that just turning left to right at the end when it straightens out. But well, it's a good attempt. Well played hole. Found the green in two on a par five. Yeah, he'll take his birdie and kick on. Third shot for Hanson. Then what a wonderful season for this young man. Showing no signs of 
slowing down and that is not his Sunday best. A strange shot there from Chris Hansen, but he'll be kicking on to uh, the next level next year, so plenty to look forward to from him. Good chance to look at this grip here for James Moore. You can see the right hand almost not on the grip. The left hand, the putter will be right through the lifeline in the hand just to take the flick out of it. Well, Hansen, after a poor chip, can he save a drop shot? No. Back to six under then for Chris Hansen. Yes, and in this sort of company, that's not the direction you want to be going in. All the players setting off on this final round, fully understanding that you have to take every chance presented. Well, that's what Graham Clark and Tommy Fleetwood are doing at the moment. But as you can see, it's a leaderboard that is packed with quality. And uh, they are going to have to play well to keep their noses in front. More to come after the break. Welcome back to the Formby Hall Classic, located on England's Gulf Coast. The course is home to the UK's first ever PGA National Residential Academy, and it opened in 2008. The PGA Academy is fully equipped with state-of-the-art technology, including radar ball tracking and video swing analysis, aimed at developing both beginners through to established club players. The Harold Swash Putting School is short game tuition providing motion analysis to improve a golfer's putting. Expert Phil Kenyon talks us through the equipment. We have a few different types of equipment. We have um, a machine which uh, analyzes the movement of the putter head, which uh, gives us ultimately 27 different parameters. We also have some high-speed cameras which film the, uh, the roll of the ball, so we can work out if a player's in part in side spin, if they're rolling the ball as well as they can. And uh, we also have a force plate, so we can actually measure the weight distribution of any golfer. One of our recent students won the British Open, and, and Darren Clark. So we get a whole range of golfers. Um, hopefully, they all get some value from this type of analysis. Um, but certainly, you know, they tend to enjoy the experience as well. Another state-of-the-art computer system at Formby Hall is the KVEST 3D motion analysis to help improve your swing. So I'm here with Kevin in the PGA Academy. Kevin, you're going to talk me through some high-tech scientific golf stuff, yeah? I am, yes. What on earth is that? This is a care vest. Uh, it's going to measure your swing in 3D. I'm going to look at how efficient your swing is <laughs> by, by, by seeing which part of your body you start your downswing with and then measuring at which, you know, what happens to your chest, your hips, your arm at different points in your swing. So now we're going to record your swing in 3D and have a look at your, what's called your kinematic sequence, so how you're using your body. Oh, no, it won't. Oh. OK, so this tells me your efficiency. So, so I'm looking at here your transition sequence, which is saying whether you've moved your hips first, your chest second and your arm third, which you have, which is perfect. Oh. And then your sequence, which is your speeds, again, are perfect. Any numbers that are in red are out of the corridors of movement of all the world. Are they good numbers or bad numbers? The good numbers. OK. The good numbers, you're only slightly in the red. We need to get you into green. So what we should do now is take the impact position and see if we can get that into green. All right, so I'm going to put this stick through your belt buckle. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to... That's going to help you to open your hips on the way back and then you're going to rotate your hips as much as you can to the left using that stick as a guide. Right. And that's going to get your hips more open at impact and fix your 3D result. We're trying to get that green number. That's what we're doing. That was nice. Good swing. That's great numbers. Thanks very much, Kev. Thank you. Plenty of stuff for me to work on. Uh, let's get out and see how to do it properly with the pros on the Euro Pro Tour. Well done, Spoonie. I had a go on one of them once. It said I was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> see, the camera never lies. Paralysis by analysis, some of it is. I tell you what, though, some guys swear by it, and they really do get the benefit. Yeah, Phil Archer, old school pro. He's not having a good final round by his standards, and it's not the sort of attack he wanted to mount. Well, needed to be a little more consistent. It's not finding the fairways and greens, which is what Tommy Fleetwood is doing. just loses his height a little in the downswing, the head goes down. A little bit like Matteo Manasero. That's not a bad 
person to look at from his age. Same sort of body structure. He's not exactly taking the flag out, but he's uh, getting some good numbers out there. Now, Sean Whiffin still in the mix. Looking pretty smooth out there. Flags are not easy to get close to because of the undulations in the greens. There's almost greens within the greens, so you have to hit the right section. And then Chris Hansen, tee shot at the sixth. Just dropped uh, a few shots at the start of his round, so he's back to six under, and he's going to need more of that if he's going to put himself back in contention. This is the part of the game that Phil Archer has struggled a little bit with over the last few years. He got that one to land very softly, but with these new grooves, of course, the ball will not spin coming downwind. Very difficult, those little shots. Birdie opportunity for Whiffin. Fleetwood and Clark have managed to get to double figures under the card. Just waiting for someone to join them. He struck them beautifully. I mean, again, the run on the greens is fantastic, and the, the pros can really trust their judgment, and then it is down to their judgment. Fleetwood then to get to 11 under, a good 20 feet. Not a great deal of break on this one, just a little left to right at the end. Oh, he's judged it beautifully. Yeah. Absolute cracker. Members enjoyed that one. Thought you read it pretty well as well, Ross. Fantastic part from Tommy Fleetwood. Putting some pressure on Clarkey. Of course, the likes of Hansen now need to step on the gas. Five behind, make that four behind. Hello. Well, we had fireworks at the start of this final round and it's picking up again. All starting to drop. And this is certainly one that Phil Archer needs to drop if he's going to keep moving forward. Oh dear, up and straight after it. Yeah, not a good rhythm to that stroke. Needs to go maybe into the academy and have a little go on the various machines. Absolutely. Now then, that's what's happened to the leaderboard. Clark and Fleetwood with a share of the lead on 11 under, but of course Fleetwood with plenty of the course to go. And today, in these conditions, he'll see that as opportunity rather than trying to hang on to a score. So it's all about what Graham Clark can do over the closing holes in terms of his clubhouse score. But he's going to post a good mark, I think, today. Very important part of the round there for Graham Clark. 11, 12, 13. We'll go to Sean Whiffin on his par putt on the ninth. Oh, nice. Little all-round good putt. If you ever see those in slow motion, they're amazing how the ball nearly comes out. Clark for birdie. Got company at the top of the leaderboard. That's these sorts of putts that Graham Clark tends to excel at. Again, he's, he's just so confident. He goes after everything on the greens. Cowan. Fourth shot. Good aggressive move through the ball yet again. This hole causing all sorts of trouble, but that's a great pitch. And he'll secure his bogey there. He keeps doing it. George Count. Clark with another wonderful long part. I say he left one short the other week, and my co commentator Matt Woods fainted. Nice work. The key to the game, how many times do we hear the likes of Ross McFarland say it, but it's the putting that wins you the tournaments. It's the short game. Just about getting away with it, Tommy blocked his tee shot and blocked his second shot. And I think that's really comes from that loss of height on the downswing when it gets just stuck inside. That'll be his bad shot for a little while. Haven't seen Dykes for a, a few holes. Just urging it on. 
And certainly well worth the shout. That was beautiful from Tim Dykes. But work to be done for this young man. Cut underneath that one too much. That came out very softly. Well, we heard him talk about being entered as a youngster into tournaments and that toughened him up. He's going to need some of that mental toughness now. So we go to Warren Bennett, nine under with his tee shot at the sixth. One under par for the day so far. Oh, he's been a lovely striker of the ball. Generous size greens. Straight back to school after that tee shot. Now, this is a very important part for Fleetwood. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here we go. Straightforward, pal. <laughs> oh, that's a sigh of relief, isn't it? My goodness me. I know what you're talking about in terms of the pressure now, Ross. He's feeling it. Now, maybe that will play into the hands of some of the other Euro Pro players who are just a little more used to this situation. Going out from a long way out, just chanced his arm there. It's in play. Yeah, he's been playing well, finished tied second just a couple of weeks ago at Witchwood Park. So our leader's in a little spot of bother. Clark on the 12th. This is a tough hole, this 12th. Birdie chance then for Bennett. He's gone about his business quietly today, Warren Bennett, but he's more than capable of taking this tournament. A solid putt then. When you're putting from long range, you know, important to get it within the dustbin lid. That's always been the, the mark, really, of a long range putt. Now, Grinnell going after this one in two. So he just needs to tidy it up from here, and he's guaranteed a shot. Well played. Make it sound so easy sometimes, don't we, <laughs> from the commentary box? It isn't. This certainly isn't. A long bunker shots from a deep pot. Good sand, though. And Clark's got his work cut out to make par on this 12th. Wouldn't have been the first person to have trouble on this hole. Always got a smile for the camera, even when things aren't quite going his way. Dykes also out of the sand but with a little more distance to cover. Oh, got a member's bounce there. Grinnell's birdie putt. Very stiff action. Gets the job done, that's the key to it. Yeah, quite a few of the young pros, Ross, do really lock that putting action out now. You see them really arch the back. Clark's more of a, a natural putter, strikes the ball very firmly. Nice positive follow through, good speed. And always has a chance, even that, that bogey that he's going to make there. It had a chance for par. It's going to change things around, but that 12th hole is one that we're going to have to look out for as some of the other contenders come through. Tim Dykes then with his third. Ball back in the stands, just punching it forward. Left wrist staying very firm through the hitting area. Oh, yes. And that's the way to do it. Well, we haven't had one of those drop in his final round. And maybe Tim Dykes has uh, just lit the blue touch paper. Look at this, changes on the leaderboard. Tommy Fleetwood chasing his first ever professional win on his home course, moves into the lead by just a single shot. This tournament is really starting to heat up.
Welcome back to the Formby Hall Classic from the northwest of England. Now, before the final round of action started, some of the players took some time out to have a little bit of fun on Formby Hall's par three course. Now, with a free round of drinks at the bar available for the winner, this was a prize everybody wanted to win. So welcome guys to the 2011 Speed Golf Tournament on the nine hole course at Formby Hall Golf Resort and Spa. We're going to be playing two holes. Uh, the format of the day is play as fast as you can. Uh, if you play a par, there'll be no time penalty. If you uh, have a bogey, you'll add 20 seconds to your score and any birdies and we'll reduce 20 seconds from your score. Good luck guys, play well and be the fastest be the winner. Here we go then, gentlemen, start your engines. Here are your runners and riders, James Busby, Tim Dykes, Jamie Abbott and Alex Belt. Well, we'd love to say this is a serious championship, but of course it isn't. And off goes James Busby, like Bambi on ice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, good first shot and hammers the part and he's up and after. He's just remembered that's a speed challenge. No time to watch the line. And a part would mean no deductions. And there we go. James Busby liked that one. Sub minute. <laughs> Tim Dykes, away he goes. This man is built for comfort, not for speed. I think that's fair to say. But clearly full of confidence. Great first shot. And then just strolls down to the putts, which of course he holds. Oh, no way. Oh, Very good stuff. Birdie reduces his time to just 31 seconds. How do you feel, Busby? <laughs> yes, Jamie Abbott, a bit of a whippet. No surprise to see underhand tactics oh, being used by oh, Alex Belt. And yes, indeed, he's been left with a shocker of a putt. But I'll tell you what, in regulation, he'd have been proud of that. They're all watching now. Oh, unlucky. Valuable seconds wasted with the putter toss. And that leaves him on one minute, five seconds. Abbott out of the running at the moment. Oh, they're trying all sorts now, but he's off and flying. And look at this from Alex Bell. And a few people didn't know he could move that quick. And he's going to beat this ball to the stop, I think. Oh, well played. Not bothering with the putter. You see, that's speed tactics for you. 39 seconds. Well, it's Dykes that leads, one to play, and away we go again. Oh, they're trying everything now. Busby's off, and Sozy's ball left himself with a tester all the way back down the green here. He struck it well. Oh, he struck it very well. And James Busby has set a terrific mark. Once again, the dirty tactics come into play, but look at Tim Dykes. Me, run on a golf course, you must be joking. Needs to hold this, doesn't, and only just remembers that it's a speed event. And it goes, but I think Dykes has just knocked himself out of the running. What have they got in store for Abbott this time? Oh, once again, it's the takedown. You can't recover from that, surely. He might struggle to recover from the shot as well. He's still running, though. You've got to hand it to these boys. They've entered into the spirit of this speed challenge. But I'm afraid he can't match Busby for quality on the green. And Abbott, too, sees his challenge fade into the water with the ball. And I think we'll see the end of uh, the speed golf for Abbott. Very good, though. Didn't ask for a ruling on the two takedowns. And that's a terrific <laughs> tee shot from Bell. Got away from them before they could nobble him. Alex Bell. That one needed to drop, I think. Still a good effort from him. Good effort from all four boys. I think, though, this is going to be very tight indeed. Here's Mark Williams with the final result. The results in reverse order for the 2011 uh, nine-hole course, two-hole challenge at Formby Hall. 1 minute 56, Jamie Abbott. Well done, thank you. And in third place, 1 minute 20, Tim Dyke. Oh, Tim, okay. And in second place, 1 minute and 9 seconds, Alex Belt. The winner, 1 minute <laughs> and 6 seconds, Mr. Captain America, James Bullock. <laughs> well played. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to James Busby on winning 2011 Part 3 Championships. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,
A taste of success here at Formby Hall for James Busby. Unfortunately, he didn't make the cut this week, but he's still in contention for a top five finish when he returns next time. Back now to the proper tournament and the final round of the Formby Hall Classic. Come on then, Ross, who would you pay money to see doing that speed challenge? <laughs> I tell you what, I reckon Garcia could have them all done. Oh, yes. Now then, Arch, with his tee shot, it, it hasn't gone his way. And we've had the scowl from Phil Archer for most of this final round, and that will not make him any happier. You've really got to dig in. You've got to embrace the fact that it's not going quite well. Luke Goddard just a little off-piste on the 10th. 311 yard. Par four, which when the wind's favourable, players have a dig at it. Count. I've seen him uh, perform quite a lot of really tidy up and downs today. Got a bit more work to do for an eagle here. And uh, annoyed with himself because well, those sorts of scores today are like gold dust. Going to have to settle for birdie here. And does. So it takes him to 10 under. George Cowan, a name still in the mix, and there's plenty of them. This is awkward now off a down slope. Feet above the ball, so they come out squirting and right. Well, there we go, right on cue. It's so difficult, you have to keep your knees very level. Keep your knees at the same height, that's a, a really good tip. Got hard for birdie. Had rounds of 65 and 72. Would have been frustrated with that second day. But uh, I'm sure that now is a dim and distant memory. Goddard picks up a shot. Phil Archer at eight under. And you feel he's going to drop at least one shot here. Long range par putt. It's a great effort. It was a terrific part. Well appreciated, but it's going to be a drop shot. Graham Clark did have the lead on his own, then was co-leader with uh, local lad Tommy Fleetwood. Just trailing by a single shot now, but I mean Clark would love another win, but from the order of merit point of view, it's this consistency thing that is just keeping him in contention all year. And, fully expect him to make another return and hopefully a successful one to the challenge tour this time yeah he and chris hansen seem to really have it locked up phil archer tidying up for his bogey of course he's been in the heights of european golf yeah that's where this young man wants to go chris hansen from uh, woodson hall Really is a great training ground for these youngsters to come through. And not only youngsters, of course, Gary Wollstonehome came through. Aaron has now had success in the seniors tour this year. Yeah, it's very interesting to see the different levels and different ages of golfers using the Euro Pro Tour for various preparation. But it really is about the younger players kicking on to uh, the senior level. Now, Whiffin has had two rounds sub-70 so far, a couple of 69s. And playing very well into the bargain. Just a short shot, no more than a pitching wedge on the 11th. Key to get your tee shot in the right place, right centre of the fairway. And some for birdie. Dropped a couple of shots early on and trying to make those back. There we go, back to where he started. Par putt then for Graham Clark. This hole is stroke 17 for the members, but has been playing 
almost a fifth of a shot over par this week. Birdie opportunity for Whiffin. You can see how the trees and the, the water protect the flag position. Didn't quite get the shape on the shot that he was going for, and he's left himself with a, a longer opportunity. Very clever design, that hole, because the further you go up, you go into the rough, and you're not in the fairway, and you can't shape your shot. I can't believe this course is only seven years old, can you? I, I know, I know, it's incredible. Here's a man that has been playing around these parts, including this course, for many, many years now. You heard Spoonie refer to it as the Gulf Coast, and Tommy Fleetwood believes that is part and parcel of why he is successful. Fine shot from Fleetwood. Yet again, another fairway missed for Phil Archer. Back at seven under now, two over on the day. Trying to just cut this one in left to right, take a bit of distance out of his second shot. And he's left himself in probably the worst position he could. Short-sided, bunker between him and the hole. Bennett from uh, the Sudbury Golf Club. Started with a 71, but then came back with an absolutely rip-roaring 65 in the second round. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some really good scores in the 60s today from quite a lot of the contenders. And that's where you're going to have to be if you're going to challenge. Goddard, of course, started with a 65. And 72 second day. And there's the difference coming from the fairway. Has the control on the shot. Oh, Phil Archer. Trials and tribulations of a pro. The shoulders have dropped, I'm afraid. Still has a putt for a birdie there. His problem there was the second shot, not his third shot. He went out level pegging with his playing partner, Tommy Fleetwood. But it's Fleetwood that's kicked on, moved from 9 to 11 under. And now a chance to pick up another couple here. Get in, get in. Oh, oh, yes. Well, that really has thrown this tournament wide open now. And Fleetwood has established himself at the top of the leaderboard in some style. That means that Bennett will need to step up a gear. Birdie putt here at the ninth. Get to ten under. Has it got the pace? It has. Well done, Warren. Oh, this is wonderful stuff. I do love the way this final round has sort of ebbed and flowed, and they're all they're all at it again now. Big moment then for Archer. Needs this. Can he stay in touch? Oh, my goodness. Bring your weapons. Beautiful shot from Goddard. As Ross said, from the fairway, so got plenty of control on it. Now, needs the reward. Gets it. Beautiful golf we're seeing now from the players. In beautiful conditions. It's a real shame in the final group. Invariably, you, you do get one player left behind, and it seems to be Phil Archer who's left behind. And even further now. That's back to six under three, over for the day. Well, that's what Fleetwood's done to the rest of the field with that eagle. Moves himself to 13 under, three shots ahead now of this man, Graham Clark. Graham will be aware from the leaderboards around the course what is going on, so you might see him take a few risks here. Going with the three wood, water right. On this par five. Once again, water in evidence. Second shot for Bennett. Tee shot going a little bit too far. Can he get the control? from that rough, he can. Seem to get quite steep on that, took quite a divot there. Try and get a bit of extra spin. From Clark 
Mark's point of view, not quite the chance he wanted to create, but it's not gone yet. Oh, and with shots like that, he should keep scoring. Beautiful. Interesting how he removes his glove when he plays his short shots, just to get that extra little bit of feel. Well, more good news for Fleetwood fans. He's birded the eighth. He's now at 14 under par. It's his second shot into nine after a big drive. It's just a little hands and arms pitch. Yeah, we had a bit of a peloton going on, didn't we? All the bikes clustered together at the front and then bang, away he's gone. It's a break from Fleetwood. Can anyone cover it? Well, this man won't go away. Graham Clark, who's just playing some of the best golf of his life this season. And he's very open about his experiences on the Challenge Tour, said how tough it was with all the travelling and, you know, very difficult getting on an aeroplane to just getting in the car and driving to a course, but he'll be prepared next time around. Oh, here we go, here we go, Warren Bennett's in the, uh, in the mix again. Well, Graham could go and ask Warren what the situation is. He's played a lot on that European tour, has suffered a lot as well. Hansen, he's gone right to the edge, hasn't he? Well, you can go, and uh, it's paid off. Oh, fantastic stuff. That little reminder of the class of Chris Hansen. But all of it being eclipsed at the moment by this man. Look at this, chance to go to 15 under. And we're at the turn. It's a shame, really. It's been a terrific nine holes, though. Five under par through the first nine, out in 31. Take that. <laughs> Absolutely. All seems rather tame now when you go back to Hanson for his birdie. Gone after it, gone after it well. Good management of the hole there. Been a good comeback for Chris. He sort of struggled early on, dropped back to six under par, but since then he's really worked his way back into contention. And he's just five shots behind our leader. Now we're Fint laying up. So he should get some good control off this one. And we'll want to give himself a, a birdie opportunity. Guilt edge if possible. Oh no, it's kicked on. Didn't grab for Sean Whiffin and more frustration for the man from London. So what can Tim Dykes do? Can he get into double figures? He'll need to hold this, his third shot on the 12th. One of the more difficult holes seems unlikely, but he has chipped in once already and showing us all the skills he's got with that short game. That's fantastic. Whiffin's birdie putt ending up here. And again, the sort of high standards that these golfers have and set themselves, it, it just isn't where they want to be. It's not what Sean Whiffin wants to be doing at the moment. Well, bogeys that late in the round are so crucial. Very little time to get anything back. Dykes then. Oh, no. Rush of blood there from Tim Dykes at the 12th. And a bogey for him. Right then, some tough holes to come. Let's take a look at the 17th. Here with the director of golf at Formby Hall, Mark Williams. Uh, good morning. 17 and 18 going to be crucial uh, if you're going to walk away with this Euro Pro title. Tell us a little bit more about this hole. That's right, hole 17 uh, all starts with a, with a tough tee shot. Uh, you've got trees in play left and right, about 230 yards off the tee. Uh, if you hit it too straight, then there's bunkers in play. So the tee shot you've got to decide, you know, do you play with a, you know, with a, f a rescue or a fairway wood, uh, leave yourself a longer second shot, or do you, do you go for gold but then risk getting into the, into the pot bunkers? If you go in those pot bunkers, then it literally is a splash out sideways, so you're then staring a bogey in the face. Second shot into the green with a good drive is going to be a, you know, wedge shot, uh, birdie chance. If you come off your second shot though, uh, with the pin cut down the right hand side, the, the Swan Lake is in play, uh, and wait for any, any, any slightly pushed second shots. Aguas <laughs> gas.
might get lucky. Mark, you've got 160 yards for your second shot. Uh, what are you going to play and how are you going to play it? Well, the wind's getting up as we speak, Spoonie, um, so I'm going to probably take a little six iron, uh, knock it down, middle of the green, and just play a patient shot and, and not be too greedy. So is there any danger of that water being in play for the players this week? I think definitely, um, you know, if, if, you, if you come off it a little bit, if you get a little bit edgy coming down this hole, where, you know, when the, the tension might creep in a little bit, you know, good players can come off it sometimes, so that brings the water into play down the right-hand side. At the same time, you see the bunkers down the left-hand side. If you protect against the water and turn it over, uh, you've got two big pot bunkers in play, uh, and it's a bogey from there. So as we both found there, Mark, uh, not an easy green to hit. Water on the right, bunkers on the left. That's right, it was a challenging shot, and I think the key there was that even you can feel the breeze coming into you, uh, walking up to the green, but once you go above the trees as well, which we both did, uh, you know, the wind's knocking the ball out of the sky and, and, and taking it along with it. So it's, yeah, it's a tough shot, and uh, I'm sure today the players are going to have to come up with something special to get it close to this pin. Now, we both need to get up and down for par. Yeah, so, I will. So will I. OK, <laughs> let's do it. Solid. So the 17th hole, not for the faint-hearted, hit the fairway. Still a lot of work to do. Four will be a good score. You are kidding me. What a putt. <laughs> it's always been lucky. Back to the action then with Graham Clark. Second shot into this 17th. You've heard. Water to the right, bunkers to the left. And he's stuck in the middle. Reminds me of a song, that. <laughs> so Chris Hansen, his second shot on this difficult par 4 12th. Even the members struggle on this one. Long iron from the trees on the right. Not sure he can get there, and doesn't. Tim Dykes, a bit like Chris Hansen, waiting for his round really to kick off. 238-yard par 3 13th. It's a monster of a hole. And he's got another nice kick. He'll take that. One of the two holes without any water on it, that one. Clark up ahead. Can he birdie this 17th? One up on Spoonie. Yes. Bragging rights to Sniffer. He liked that one. Nice two, son. Two? <laughs> when is it that one? <laughs> <laughs> you landed in the hole. Oh, nice one two. Bounce. Yeah. Goodness me. It's all getting very carried away out there on the course. Did they do that in your day, Ross? No, basically. <laughs> they usually screamed at you if you made a birdie. This is a par putt, though, for Chris Hansen. That hurt. It's been a real up and down day for Chris. Not in the good sense, though. Plenty to think about then for uh, Hansen. And for Dykes, nice little kick off the right next to that bunker. Brought it back into birdie territory this bone dry hole oh, click of the fingers there a load of old pony eh Ross yeah he had an uh, unlucky horseshoe a few holes ago it's then for his par oh, that is a very poor bogey after setting up a great opportunity in general though some cracking golf in this final round and Tommy Fleetwood's charge has taken him to a two-shot lead ahead of Graham Clark but look at the names that are still in contention I think there's a long way to go in this tournament more great golf to come welcome back to the Formby Hall Classic now 17 and 18 are going to provide us with a good finish today that's for sure and at Spoonies at the 18th to tell us more so on the 18th tee here at Formby Hall uh, Mark, I've got to be honest, I absolutely love it when golf courses finish with a par five. It could go either way. 
That's true. Me too, Spoonie. I think uh, 18 is 544, uh, par 5. Risk and reward hole off the tee. You've got quite an inviting tee shot, as you can see. You've got some water down the right-hand side. Two bunkers down the left at 260 yards. Uh, you know, so if you try and shy away from the water too much, those bunkers come into play. But get the ball on the fairway and the, the second shot, the green's in play. Well, we're all square. Going down the last. Yeah. May the best man win. Anything could happen. Anything. Mark, I've gone down the left wing, not by design, uh, but I think that's the play today. I think you're right, Spoonie, off the tee. Uh, there's no danger around there. There's a couple of trees, uh, as long as you avoid those uh, and the bunkers, you're OK. So left is definitely the safe side. If you get a lie, then you can just lay up short of the brook. Uh, and notice the pin's cut tight right on the 18th today, so uh, any layup kind of front left gives you an easy shot into the pin. OK, well, good luck with your second shot. Yeah, you too. So if you're not big off the tee, this is more than likely the kind of area you'll be playing your approach shot to the green. Yeah, that's correct. We both missed the fairway. Uh, we had to lay up short. We both laid up pretty well into this popular hitting area for your, for your third shot. I think the, uh, you can see from the, where the pin is today, it's cut tight right. Um, so even from where we are now, still a tricky shot. Uh, might require a little bit of fade on the ball. Well, let's see what we can do. Well, it's all square, so uh, let's see what you've got. A lot to play for. So we're both safely on the 18th green now. Uh, Mark, I must say, it's quite a generous size green for a par five. I think you're right. Um, you know, we've, there's plenty of space left of the pin today. So if you play ultra safe, though, you're going to maybe leave yourself in three putt range. Uh, go for the pin shot side yourself. Front right, there's a big pot bunker. There's also a runoff area here to the right of the green as well, as you can see, which is going to be a tricky up and down today. Uh, I think the key is getting the ball, second shot, pin high, if you can. You now, you hit a great shot in there, but the wind caught it. Looked great in the air, uh, pulled up a little bit short. Um, but getting pin high and not being too greedy, I think, is the key with this shot. Well, let's see who's got the uh, short stick working. Based on hole 17, it's looking like you. <laughs> Good luck. Well played. Well done. Friendly half. Well, again, yes, again. <laughs> well done. So there you have it. Nine strokes down the last two holes. I think the players will be trying to go at least one better than that. Back to the action. Well, I think Spoonie got a shot on 17 and he won one up. Good call, Ross. Good call. Yeah, what's Spoonie playing off these days? I think he might be sneaking into the old single figures, but this fella isn't. He's a pro and he's a scratch handicapper and a good one, but that isn't. Well, Spoonie said he likes a, a par five finish to a course and the pros certainly enjoying this one at Formby and that's why we're going to get a good finish there. I think who, whoever scores there wins really. Cowan. That was the danger from that shot. Ball above his feet. Turn it right over. Oh dear, it's, it's going to keep running. It's not just the uh, the greens that are running well, the rough's going pretty well. You can see with that brown tinged grass in the back, the, the amount of rain they've had in this area recently. Luke Goddard. Strong left hand grip, good full rotation through the ball. And that looks like it's just a club out, it was a good shot. Beautiful colours with the, the deep greens and the water behind Graham Clark. He won't be paying too much attention to the scenery right now, though. Purposeful shot from the bunker once again. It's, it's interesting, isn't he, Graham Clark? For such a relaxed player, he's very aggressive. Yes, it's a, quite an anomaly, really, for a golfer. You would imagine, you know, the likes of Fred Couples. You can see everything is relaxed, whereas Graham is a, quite a positive player. Long may he play that way for a, a while. Yeah, absolutely. Could be successful at the next level. Count, who's had a number of 
decent up and downs. Just leaving that one a touch short by his own high standards. So important for Goddard to get up and down here. Try and put some pressure on Tommy Fleetwood. And that was a good shot. Pros play a lot of loft from just short to the green. You see a lot of the amateur golfers would go with less loft. Get along the ground and running. It's another great strike. He always gets a good roll on his putts. He really does. And you can just see in Graham Clark's face, this isn't quite the target that he wanted to set. But 12 under is still a very good clubhouse lead. Well, terrific round, 65, including that drop shot. And it was a great progression from 71, day one, 68, day two. Equals the best round that we've had so far at the tournament. Oh, again, it's never good when you're straight up and after it. Genuine anger there from George Cowan. You would have uh, heard the canny accent there. Proud Northeasterner. What's the matter with you, man? Birdie chance for Goddard. This to go to 11 under. Very positive. Struck that in with great authority. Gallery's getting bigger. Medium iron for Fleetwood on this 12th. And that's one of the best second shots we've seen on this difficult hole. Yeah, Tommy Fleetwood finishing runner-up to Daniel Gaunt in a Challenge Tour event, but still chasing that first professional win. I just wonder down the closing stretch whether that will play on his mind a touch. Dykes again with that superb chipping action. I mean, it really is wonderful to watch. You've got to be so confident, though, to be that loose with the wrists. Very soft. Let's the club do the work. Sean Whiffin sort of really in contention early on, but has, has not kicked on from there. This par three. <laughs> now there is a member's bounce if ever I saw one. Certainly kicked on from there. Great tee shot from Whiffin. I can tell you that uh, he went on to tap him for birdie at 16, so that takes him to nine under. That's the score that Paul Grinnell is on, his second shot at 14. It's not just the flags that are protected, it's, it's some of the layup zones as well that are protected by the contours and trees. Yes, and you need uh, good strength to reach one or two of these par fives in two. This one particularly, 591. Hansen taking dead aim with the three wood. Oh, oh goodness me. That's a belter. The ball stopped so quickly as well. That showed you the quality of the strike. Fleetwood moving himself with a real burst of energy through the, the mid part of this round to 14 under. Can he go further? Not with that putt. But again, it's fine. No troubles. Well, there been 34 birdies on this hole all week. That shows you how difficult that one is. Semi rough, Paul Grinnell. Good control on the spin. Forward to Luke Goddard at 17. Saw Spoonie play it earlier today, play it very well, incidentally. But real danger to the left and the right. Such a short club there for Goddard. That was a big mistake. Could be plugged in one of those bunkers. Now back to this par 3, 13th, 238 yards. Depending on weather conditions, obviously, that will vary how tough it is. And Warren Bennett just hoping for a, a good bounce there. Didn't happen.
What an opportunity this is for Chris Hansen. Get him to double figures. Good speed. That's a great effort. Gave that every chance. Well, we can't quite see the lie of Luke Goddard. I think when it comes out, we'll understand how badly it was plugged. And it wasn't indeed. It was lying beautifully because he was able to get some stop. We saw the depth of that bunker. Luke around about five foot six. Birdie for Grinnell, as Ross said, really does lock this putting stance out. It was machine-like, but it's working. <coughs> Warren Bennett really does arch his body way over the ball. Shortish backswing, good positive through stroke. Astonished gasps there from the, the gallery. Well, that's a bogey then for Warren because he came up short in that par three, his first bogey of the day. Now Hansen, terrific effort with the eagle putt. Needs to come back up the hill now for birdie. Does so. Takes him to nine under. But if they're going to get back in touch with the, the guys at the top of the leaderboard, and Tommy Fleetwood in particular, someone's going to need to hold an eagle. And this is a crucial par putt. So late in the round. Ooh, just nicely in. There's a horseshoe that worked. Two shots clear still, Fleetwood. Clark in the clubhouse with that superb 65 for 12 under. So is Fleetwood going to hang on? Or is somebody going to manage to pressure him enough to get past him? Playoff, of course. Haven't mentioned the playoff word yet. Long iron trying to draw it in. Carried those bunkers at the front. Used the little knuckle on the right to push it into the green. That's a beautiful tee shot. Now that definitely is a little bit of local knowledge there. Classic pro shape to that shot. A little shorter on the par three stakes here. 185 yards for. Tim Dykes at the 16th. Just frustrating for him that he's got stuck on that eight under for most of the day. That's nice. That's nice. With him taking dead aim. With a three wood ball below his feet. Easy to leave this out to the right. This looks like it's leaking that way. Oh dear. Seems to be just okay. Caught a little tree, came backwards. This for 15 under for our leader. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the little fist pump there might just have relieved some of the tension that he would have been feeling. Hasn't scored for a little while. That's done him the world of good. putted so well on the back nine last week. Is that one of the more frustrating ones? You've got the line and it's just come up an inch or so short. Everything's frustrating in this game. That's why <laughs> golf's a four letter word. We're in then from under the trees. 18, I'm sure, is going to yield something for one of our top contenders today. Oh, that's exquisite. <laughs> that's just brilliant. Well, Sean Whiffin has, has come up with a couple of belters today. And that, oh, it's nearly a smile. Steady on. Grinnell, classic setup, flat back. Good through the ball, nice extension. And that one resulting in a, a good long to medium iron. Really been impressed at the, the golf course and how well it's been set up. 
Yeah, it's been a, an exciting and very entertaining challenge. Within tidies up. What do you make of this score, Cardros? Yeah, it looked like he was really going great guns and the momentum all came to a stop when he missed a shortish putt early on in the back nine. The momentum is so key in these tournaments. Yeah, the only man that's really had that in the final round is Fleetwood. Everybody else really treading water. Oh, again, another fantastic read. A very good strike from Grinnell. I think both he and Hansen have fed off each other very well in the latter part of this round. Bennett for a birdie. Can he get the shot back? He's just dropped. Now, isn't that always the way you, you hit your putt too hard on the previous hole? And when you've got a chance on the next, it never quite reaches. So just a par then. And so then, it's not the sort of distance you want to save par. Yeah. It'll do though. It'll do very nicely indeed. Would have loved it for birdie. So in the end, a very good save for Chris Hansen at 15. Can't say the same for his playing partner, Paul Grinnell. Double bogey has taken him out of it. Tommy Fleetwood then leads on his home course by three shots. It's all about the chasing pack from here on, and we're going to cut to the chase after the break. Welcome back to the Formby Hall Classic. Good word, that. Classic weather, classic course, and we're heading for a classic finish. And Ross McFarlane alongside me. It should be Tommy Fleetwood's to lose this one. Yeah, I think so. And the likes of Luke Goddard can certainly get in a good position and improve his order of merit position as well. Long iron into 18, just drifting down the right and leaving himself a very awkward up and down. Really good hole, this last one. Spoonie walking with the uh, Luke Goddard gallery. Probably giving him some advice on how to play that 18th. Not allowed, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Now then, there's the man we've been talking about, Tommy Fleetwood, launching this one. And a very different route to the flag than the one we've seen from many today. I was able to get there with a utility wood. Now, like Graham Clark, Luke Goddard removes his glove when he chips. Looks like he's going to bump it just over the top of the bunker. Releases through. That's all about imagination. You really have to see those shots, and once you see the shot, commit to them. Fleetwood will certainly commit to this. He's got shots in the bag. He can really go after this eagle. And he didn't. Wow, that surprises me. Maybe deep down he's thinking, don't want to three-putt and make a part. Need to at least secure my birdie. Well, good thinking if that was the case. And Fleetwood moves to 16 under, and nobody is making a move to catch him. This then to Ty Graham Clark in the clubhouse for the lead. And uh, good stuff from Luke Goddard. Good round, spluttered a bit at the start, Ross, but finally got going. Yeah, highlighted with that early on eagle, a 67. Third shot to the par 4 15th. Another player, a little bit like uh, Grinnell, like Tim Dykes, whose round has just been about treading water, hasn't kicked on. Just a little bit of right to left wind on this 16. Just a zephyr, really, today. The right to left shape. All in all, that's a terrific approach. Nice shot from Hansen. Now I must I must admit, this is one of the men I had my money on at the start of the day, Warren Bennett. Oh, I can see why you had your money on him. 
Very good approach on 15. A hole which has caused no end of trouble for the players. Dykes launching this one. Hit that one full and uh, got the reaction from it as well. Cowan on 15, 461 yard. Hardest hole on the course for the members. Rick. Playing the second hardest for the pros this week. Just a fraction over, half a shot over its par. That's how difficult it is. And it claims another victim in George Cowan. Here we go. George Cowan been very frustrated with himself on a number of occasions today, but he's played some good golf into the bargain. Steer the wind, buffeting the golfers. It's not easy on the green. And it's made that look easy, though, for par. So Warren Bennett hangs on to 10 under as we go forward to 16. See if Chris Hansen can get himself to double figures under the card. And But for those two drop shots early on, things could have been very different. Well, good for pace, but just the read there, not quite right. Tim Dykes. And he hold a, a monster putt. Chipped in earlier. Well, there's your answer, not quite. Tell you what, there's a big gallery forming behind the 18th. I'm sure to cheer local hero Tommy Fleetwood home, but uh, it's the undercard at the moment as Tim Dykes putts out. Frustrations for him today after his performance last week. I should secure a top 10 finish, though, for Tim. Another good week. But this fellow is the one who could have his hands on the title. He's got one hand on the trophy already. This 15th hole. Can he get through a hole that's caused so much trouble? That's almost in Warren Bennett's divot. Shot for Hansen at this fantastic finishing hole at 18. As we heard from Spoonie, a bit of risk and reward involved, but feeling that maybe left side was the way to go. Fairway's the best, I can assure you. <laughs> Absolutely. But oh, that dear. is not the place to go. No, no, no. Now I bet it's second into 17. Expect to see this one very close. go right on cue that crystal ball of yours always works doesn't it mystic golding now which way will tommy fleet would play this to keep that along the ground or through the air needs to go over the ridge in front of him very different way that pitch could be because of the way the ball was lying the lie depends the shot. If you got a good lie, you probably would have taken them all loft and lobbed it all the way over the hill. So Chris Hansen taking his medicine and uh, just a touch of anger involved in that third shot, I think. And very well done as well. He may get away with a, a par ball below the feet for Paul Grinnell. He certainly went after that. He was on line, but is it going to miss the bunker? It is. Terrific shot. And he'll have that for an eagle. Well, a couple of lovely sounding strikes from the two young men on the fairway and good results as well. Come on then, Warren. Here we go. Verdi. Very well done. It is still all about Fleetwood. But remember.
remember there's money to be had in them there lower places. Well, also money to be had, important for Chris Hansen, a leader in the Order of Merit. He knows now that Graham Clark at 12 under may eclipse him at the top of the Order of Merit. Yeah, good point, the bigger picture. A little bit hot on that last shot from Fleetwood. Can you recover? Feeding back down towards the hole, but not quite enough. Well, he held a monster par putt on five earlier, which is a real momentum grower. But at this stage in the round, he's still, what, three shots ahead of Graham Clark, the clubhouse leader. And the most dangerous hole out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. He's barely put a foot wrong today's Fleetwood. Bennett then just watch this swing. A model of discipline violence, wasn't it? They used to say about uh, the golf swing of the great Gary player. That one a lot smoother. Beautiful finish. Always had a great motion, Warren Bennett. Now here, the man who technically plays his game. It's not about feel, he gets the ball in or the club in the right positions, works very hard, and that eagle attempt was very good. Just needed a fraction more power, and that would have been there. Tap in for birdie then, for Paul Grinnell. Rather like Tim Dykes, just didn't quite get it going. on 16 for Fleetwood fairway found which is the crucial thing to do <laughs> setting up that I think we're in just about say it's yours oh yes just about what a belter yeah he's, he, he's walking now to the green and those are the little stages of the final parts of a round where you don't want to let the thoughts get into your head I've won this mustn't do that good nice finish for uh, Chris Hansen nine under for him and he's challenged in pretty much every tournament this season and that's why rather like Graham Clark there's a consistency to Hansen's game now just lacking a little pace you can see now he's quite happy with pars. He knows his situation. The adrenaline will be coursing through his veins. Everything will be moving bar the ball. <laughs> they have to keep it all under control at 18, which is what this man has done. Exquisite drive from Bennett. And he's going to try and pop this one right in the heart of the green with his second, well, he's not far away. That is just superb. Wonderful to see that the greats in action. Beautiful hitting, really good swing. And one that you should copy. What a strong grip, very strong left hand. You see how that head goes down at impact, but who cares? It's down the middle. Look at that. Well, that's probably the last bit of danger <laughs> for uh, this young man, Tommy Fleetwood. And he's going to walk down that 18th, and I think he's going to really enjoy himself. Eagle chance then for Bennett. This is a, a money putt for him. Yeah, it's a good putt. It is a good putt, but it's not going to be enough to get him past the clubhouse leader. So Graham Clark at 12 under, and uh, he's joined by Warren Bennett. And Luke Goddard also on that number, so a trio at 12 under. But our leader, who's taking the second shot on, takes the water out of play, of course, this. I think he likes it. Oh! 
kick off the advertising hoarding there. That's taken a bit of velocity out of the ball. What a contact. Yeah, you're you're right about the, the adrenaline, Ross. Absolutely, and he actually choked down the grip a little bit there as well. Look at that. All waiting to see the young lad that they've seen play at this course for so many years now. Everybody's out to welcome Tommy Fleetwood to this 18th green. Now, can he do it in style? Plenty of loft, little sand wedge, back foot. Bump it in, get it to run towards the hole. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Puts a smile on your face. And uh, a lot of people have been supporting this young man over the last three days. An emotional moment as Tommy Fleetwood knocks it in and claims his first ever professional title. He's done it. He's taken the Formby Hall Classic here on his home course and he's done it brilliantly. 16 under. Fleetwood is the champion by a mile. On a quality final round of 65 when the pressure was on in the leading group. We're going to see a lot of this young fella. I think we are, Ross. I think we are. What a wonderful win for Tommy Fleetwood here at Formby Hall by an incredible four shots. Graham Clark, Luke Goddard, Warren Bennett have to settle for a share of second. Right, Spoonie's with the winner. In the end, he did it at a canter. Local boy, champion, the Formby Hall Classic winner, 2011, Tommy Fleetwood. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks very much. It um, honestly feels amazing to win a, my first pro event in front of a home crowd here, so I'm ecstatic. It's a little bit cheating, though, don't you think? Like, your home course, you know, every nook and cranny. Yeah, I actually kept complaining about a few members' bounces I got today. <laughs> um, but, you know, I played well all the week, and it was, the support was amazing, so um, I'm just made up to get the job done. So, following his win at the Players' Club, Andrew Willey is back with a vengeance on the Euro Pro Tour and can now take his place on the Order of Merit. And Graham Clark's second place here at Formby Hall, good enough to lift him above former leader Chris Hansen. A nice duel developing between those two. And the battle for the remaining three spots is the other half of the Order of Merit story. A significant number of players know that a win will put them in the top five. Next week, we're off to Lingfield Park for the Lingfield Park Golf Championship. We'll see you then.